Hi FlossTube, Olivia B here, back. Um, it's been a while, where have you guys been? I've been sitting here waiting for you to stop by and visit. Um, anyway, um, no, it's been a while since I made a video, so if you stuck with me, thank you. Um, if you haven't watched my videos before, um, there will be title screens in between the sections, so if you're not into one thing or you're into another, um, feel free to fast forward. Because um, first I'll just give you a life update, I think. Um, I, uh, it's been one of the main things that's taken place is that I've moved my company's office and that's why, um, well, part of the reason why it's been a while. Mostly it's procrastination, let's be honest. Um, but I'm an office manager, um, for a solar company, uh, located in, um, well, our office is located in downtown Oakland and, um, we, uh, we recently moved and I was in charge of that whole thing, um, not just the move, but we did a whole build out for our new space and um, I was the one kind of orchestrating things and making the decisions and developing a floor plan and working with the construction company and the building, all of that good stuff. Um, it was awesome. It was a great learning experience and a great challenge, but it took up a lot of time. Um, uh, but it all went well and it was successful and I'm excited about that. Um, but uh, it did affect my stitching in some ways. I still stitched every night and watch floss tube every night because that kind of chills me out. But um, I noticed that when things were crazy and I was having to make all these decisions and juggling a million things, um, I just wanted to focus on one piece of stitching rather than come home and make decisions about what I wanted to stitch on and um, pick up pieces and remember where I left off. So um, I focused on some pieces and that helped me finish a couple things. And then I noticed as things, as the decisions were made, but the time approaching the move came and it was kind of the calm before the storm, then I was kind of all over the place and flipping from one project to the next. Um, so, you know, it's been, a, it's been here and there, but since it's been a while, I, um, I have good progress to show you. I have uh, three finishes, three new starts, um, and the rest of my whips, almost the rest of it, all but one to show you. Um, so let's go into stitching. So I have one FFO to show you. I think I just have one. I was trying to remember. I think this is the only one. Um, this was a smaller pattern. Um, oh, I already gave the pattern away and now I'm forgetting the name. I think it's in the berry patch. Um, by all through the night, I made it into a cushion. So Allie, if you ever see this, you're my inspiration for having a cross stitch cushion. Um, Stephanie, Lindy Stitches, you're not allowed to give this to your kids to go camping. No one's allowed to touch my cushion. You only look. Um, so I just did like a, a patchwork. Um, see how these night, these like rows go? Isn't that nice? And then they're just like, what happened? I don't know. I don't know. Not worried about it. Uh, I got a little confused in the sewing of it. And then um, when I realized I didn't have enough strips, I got lazy and sewed a strip of green at the top and the bottom. But just don't tell anyone. I won't tell. You don't. Um, just an envelope pillow. Um, but yeah, I like it. And Elena said it's hers when I die. Which is a little weird, kind of a weird thing to say. But um, but yeah, I uh, I think it's cute. So it just sits in my room. Um, in my craft room. Anyway, so that was my one FFO. I have, uh, I need to get on some other FFOs, not gonna lie. But yeah, that's my FFO. And then, uh, the first finish I have to show you is Mini Garden Mandala 2 from Chatelaine Designs. Um, I stitched the first one. Oh, god, it's been probably like a year since I started this one and I finally finished it. Um, it's a set of three. Um, I was gifted the kit for Christmas a few years ago, and, um, yeah, it was, I'm glad I worked on these because it, rather than just going out and buying a full kit for a big one, because I learned that I don't think it's really my thing. Um, I love looking at these and these are just, they're just so impressive to look at, even for non-stitchers, you know, all the beads and the metallics, um, but I don't have fun stitching them. This or this one especially. The first one I did enjoy more, but this one it's like once I get to the part where I have to do the metallics and the beads, I don't really enjoy it as much. I had to frog this wrought iron gate several times. I kept losing track, and um, and then I had to backstitch the entire thing in metallic, and 
it just wasn't that fun. So I'm kind of glad it's over. I don't think I'm going to stitch the third one. Um, you never know. You know, never say never. But I did find two square frames at a um, an estate sale recently that I think I will paint and use for the two that I did stitch. So there's that. Next one is my black work piece that I was working on. Um, this is Queen Elizabeth the First. Um, is designed by Mary Hickmott. It came from one of the new stitches, um, one of issues of a ma magazine that's no longer in print called New Stitches. I believe it's issue 16 or 18. Um, you can probably find it on eBay. Um, and I think maybe you can buy the digital version of this pattern. Um, if you just search for Mary Hickmott Designs, there's a website that sells her designs. Um, and I finally finished Elizabeth. Um, and yeah, this one was com very enjoyable to stitch. I really enjoyed it. I wish there was a little more to her face, um, but, uh, but yeah, I liked doing this. Um, of course it's meant to be stitched in all black. I, with, um, wait, actually I can't remember if the gold's supposed to be there, but I used some petite treasure braid for the gold and then, yeah, I think the gold's supposed to be in there. And then, um, instead of the black for the dress, I used a, uh, Threadworks color it's like a variegated red and yeah I definitely need her framed but that was an enjoyable stitch and I definitely look forward to stitching black work in the future that's on a 32 count we got now and then my favorite this was my favorite whip last time I saw you this is Halloween at Hollyberry Farm by Stacy Nash Primitives there you go, it's finished. I loved stitching this one. I am going to stitch um, Summer at Hollyberry Farm and Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. I look forward to stitching both of those. Um, you should check out Kimberly, the Distracted Stitcher. She's stitching all of them right now. Um, and yeah, it was very enjoyable. I Let's see, what did I... I switched out the, um, the flowers. We're supposed to be carriage black. I stitched them in wrought iron, um, which is like a very dark blue like a blue black um, and I liked that change um, yeah the house the house took a lot of time but I think it was worth it um, I like the very slight variegation in there that's parchment from gentle arts and yes I really can't wait to frame this in a cool frame and hang it on my wall so that was an enjoyable stitch and I finished that up during my stressful <laughs> office move so those are my finishes. Um, I have a pile of my whips to show you. I didn't really s divide the new starts out. So you'll see I'm interspersed. I'll let you know what's new. Um, so my first whip to show you is a new start. And this is one I've wanted to stitch for a very long time. This is Winchester Mystery House by Debbie Patrick Designs. Um, I'm sure you've seen Allie from Allie Stitching Studio stitch this one. Um, I think she's almost done. I think she says backstitch to finish it up. So let's do it, Abby. Allie. Just kidding. Do whatever you like. But um, this is a fun stitch. It's so, this is unlike anything I've stitched before um, with, uh, you know, it's kind of, I don't know if intense is the word, but there's, it's, you know, I don't even know if I'd say confetti because some of you guys are stitch haze. Like that's really confetti. Um, but this is just beautifully designed. Um, what else can I say? I love it. Um, Winchester Mystery House is in San Jose, which is about an hour from where I live. Um, it was even closer when I was growing up. And this is a pop um, popular tourist destination, also a place that schools would go for field trips. So I always have fond memories of it when I was a kid. Um, if you have the opportunity, I would say check it out. Um, yes, there's a spooky element to it, uh, which is fun. I haven't seen the movie yet. I don't think it did very well. Um, but um, if you do check it out, I mean, I will tell you up front, it's, it's touristy, you know. But even if you're not there for the um, kind of supernatural element of it, um, by the way, um, the woman who built the Winchester Mystery House, she was basically the designer contractor, um, not contractor, architect of it. <laughs> she, um, Sarah Winchester, she was a wife of um, Winchester of the Winchester guns and she felt that she was she was told that she was being haunted um, by spirits and that as long as she kept up a construction and um, confused the spirits by doing weird construction it would keep the spirits at bay so she had people working on this house 24-7 um, for decades 
and there's a bunch of weird elements in the house. Um, stairs leading to nowhere, um, doors that just open on two-story drops, things like that for the benefit of um, confusing the spirits. Um, but there's also a lot of beautiful elements of architecture. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. Anyway, that's my little Winchester mystery house spiel. Hopefully I didn't get anything wrong. Sometimes I get nervous when I'm on camera and I forget things. So that's the pattern. <laughs> Getting to the stitching here. And this is where I'm at on it. Isn't that cool looking? That's before the back stitch. So you can see the shading. It's DMC. Um, you know, it's slow going, but for a reason because it's so detailed and uh, I'm really enjoying it so I'm excited to work on it and if you are interested in this pattern um, it's not out of print you can buy Debbie Patrick's designs on her website um, I think you have to buy a minimum of two because they're they're only about five or six bucks each and just makes it more worth their while to ship them out and yes that is the perfect needle minder thank you Jen this is perfect for this piece Okay, next whip. Why did I put my just put the pattern back? Next is Prairie Schooler Alphabet. I'm sure you guys have never seen this one before. Um, just in case, these are still on the first leaflet. There you go. Last time you saw this, I had finished, I think I just finished the A. I'll insert a picture of where I was last time. Here is where I am this time. I finished the B. Um, I am doing this, I converted it to the colors, to colors I like. Um, so that's the change. Um, let me, hold on, let me grab the pattern again so you can see a bit. So that's the B there. So it's not like a stark change. It's just, um, I used over dyed threads in there in colors that are just a little uh, more vibrant. Um, the Prairie School version of the colors, there's just a lot of dark brown in this piece overall and um, kind of changed it up a bit. And yeah, this is, an, this is an enjoyable one to stitch. I'll be stitching this for the rest of my life, so that's a good thing. Um, I can't believe I'm only done with the B, but I have to stop thinking about that. <laughs> just go letter by letter. So next I have to, I'm trying to decide what color I want my cow. There's this dark brown, um, and cows are dark brown, some of them, so maybe I'll go with that. Or do I want to do black? I don't know. Anyway, this is where I'm at so far. I'm enjoying it. Next whip is the Ann Ufendel sampler. I actually haven't worked on this one for a while, i got to be honest. I would love to get back to this at some point, but... Um, I have worked on it since you last saw it. I will insert a picture here of where it was last time you saw it. And there's, I guess I just, I tend to, looking through my whips getting ready for today, it looks like I just stop when there's, without concluding a thread. Cause I think I stop for the night and then the next day I, I guess I choose a different whip and I don't think to go back. So there's a hanging thread on this one. Um, here you go. This is where I am on Anne Ufendel. I didn't show you the design. Love this pattern. So beautiful. I'm finally at the basket. This will be a big basket of flowers. I'm excited for that. Um, I love that border. I'm, I guess, a quarter of the way done with the border. Yeah. So it's really pretty. Loving that one. This is on a, um, it's actually on the called for fabric for the called for threads. Called for fabric is a 40 count lakeside linens. I don't remember exact color. Maybe vintage pecan or something like that. All right, next up we have, I'm so glad I put on my like Emily C little tags on my project bags. Isn't that pretty fabric? Joanne's. This one is Country House Sampler by Brenda Keys. I started this with Maddie from Maddie on her birthday last year, last September. And I'm not very far. Um, but eh, not too bad. I didn't show you the pattern. Look, I'm rusty. That's the pattern. Super cute. 
probably not gonna do the letters I confess probably won't do my name I think I might do the lower the border so it's just above that row of trees that I've already stitched and then I'll do that whole house with that that beautiful lawn and trees super cute so that's where I'm at on that I'm doing the white stitching right now this is a uh, one over one on 25 count All right, next up, got my mom in the bag. It makes me so cozy. I just want to read a book every time I look at it. Um, this is Starry Night Sampler. I'm stitching this with a couple sister wives, Emily and Diana. This is by the City Stitcher. Um, so pretty. This is going to be a tribute piece to Tom Petty. Um, this is available still, so if you're looking for it, don't pay a lot of money. Um, but yeah, super cute pattern. I am stitching this on a um, piece of 40 count uh, sampler blue fabric from XG Designs. And that's where I am. Um, yeah, so I've got the house. I'm working on the satin stitch at the lawn at the bottom there. And um, I've done one of the greens in the flower stems. Oh, and I still have to finish this one up here too. So yeah, I still got a ways to go. Very pretty. Hopefully everything will still show well with the blue. I just wanted it to be an actual starry night. Um, I wanted the stars to pop, so we'll see how it comes out. I want the flowers to pop. Hopefully they will. Next we have this bag. Isn't that cool fabric? I love that. Um, this is Big Red Ship of Life. Um, yeah. It will take my whole life. I'm going to insert a picture of, wait, no, hold on. This is the pattern. This is the black. This is my working copy. The original smells really bad, so I'll show you this, except it's supposed to be in red. Um, here's a picture of where it was the last time you saw it. And here it is now. Okay. So I have been working on page five and making steady progress. Um, I'm stitching this in DMC. This is a 32 count uh, Charles Craft linen. I want it to be super big when it's done and it's definitely on its way to do that. So yeah, I'm on the fifth page out of 16. Um, check out Davina um, Amumula. Um, check out her Instagram. She finished this piece. It's amazing. Um, and one day, one day, many years from now, I too will finish it. I look forward to that day. Next we have an Evertope bag. It's so pretty. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and this one, I am stitching from the sisters booklet from Blackbird Designs, not Backbird Designs. Um, let me get you a good picture of the design. This is called Witch No More. Another one I'm stitching with my friend Maddie. I am stitching this on a 46 count linen from Extra Designs. I want to say buttermilk or something like that or I can't remember. It's a very pale yellow. And here, oh, here's a picture where it was last time. Here it is now. Um, getting close to a finish. I, well, I have to do the pot that the flowers are in. I have to do the flowers at the bottom. And I think I have a couple birds to put in there. More stars, but I love this. I love the colors in this one. I did stitch the pot um, for the flowers, and then I realized I did it in the wrong color. Normally, I'd be like, eh, whatever. But the pot is the only thing that's blue in the whole piece, and I really liked how it looks, so I'm going to restitch that. That is that one. Next, we have Cooper by Kathy Barrick. This is another new start. This is the design. Um, Lori from Mischievous Stitches had bought the pattern and was showing it on her Instagram with all her beautiful thread drops and DMCs on them. 
and um, said she had just bought it recently, was kidding it up, and I had just bought it recently, and the poor woman was probably like, I just want to stitch something and not have it be a sal, and I was like, hey, let's do a sal, because um, I just wanted an excuse to start it, and um, that was a perfect excuse. So her and I are stitching this, this as, long as, as well as um, Dawn on Instagram. I'll put her handle here. It's Dawn's USA AU. Dawn's U-S-A-U-S. -S. Anyway, I guess maybe I don't have to put down there if I already spelled it. But anyway, um, this is Cooper by Kathy Barrick. I just think he's a very handsome bird. Um, Lori made me wish that I could have thread drops, but I've already bobbinated all my DMC, so I figured, you know, unbobbinating it just to put on thread drops probably wasn't the smartest idea. Um, I converted, let's see, like four of the DMCs to overdyed. It's just the ones that have bigger chunks, but here we go. This is Cooper so far. So his wings and his chest and the letters are in um, overdyed threads. And I love him. He's on a 40 count toasted almond from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And yeah, I've been really enjoying him. I love his like checkered head. I'm really excited about the tail. The tail is like some of that checkering too, and then it's, oh, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Wait. And then it's got, it's covered in backstitch. Like, and I don't know, just looks really interesting to me. I like the, the way it's done. And I'm stitching the letters, guys. I don't usually do that, but the way they, and it's even a double alphabet. See how the A, B starts again? But luckily Cooper's blocking a good amount of it. It hasn't been bad. I don't mind stitching alphabets. I just don't, I just don't need them in all of my designs. And I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird thing. So yeah, that's Cooper. And thank you, Don and um, Lori for giving me an excuse to start him. Oh, we're almost there, guys. Two more. I'm sorry if this has been a lot of work for you. Ooh, okay. This one is another new start. This is Beggar's Night by Threadwork Primitives. This was a gift from my friend Maddie's dog, who has a um, surprisingly good taste in um, cross stitch patterns. I love this. I love the white pumpkin. I love the black bird. It's so pretty. Um, I did a favor for Maddie's dog, and she gave me this as a gift. It was very sweet of her. Thanks, you. Thank you so much, Hallie. I love it. And then Hallie's mom, Maddie, gave me these really pretty. Um, pins that she made with pumpkins on them and they're going to go in this when it's a pink cushion. I'll show you them at that point. Um, and this is where I am. I converted the colors on this one too. Just a little. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count fossil from Picture This Plus. Um, showing up accurately. I bought this piece on eBay like years ago. I don't know if this is what fossil still looks like, but it's very pretty. Um, the orange, I don't know if it's like this in real life, but in picture it looks kind of a, got a pinkish hue to it. Um, I did I use this orange like everything. It's pumpkin pie from Gentle Arts. And then I use this black in most things. It's Raven from Gentle Arts. Um, these lines in the pumpkin here, I used a Victoria Motto, but I'm going to have to pick them out and put a new, different shade, darker shade of gray um, to make them stand out. So I need to do the pumpkin and the vines and fill in this orange, which takes forever, and then I'll be done. But yeah, I like this one. I like them all, let's be honest. Last one. I think this is going to be the one that I finish next. That's my guess. Um, work, this is the one I'm currently working on and I love it. This is called Hannah's House um, by work ba the Work Basket. I know it's weird, but I love it. Um, here's a picture of where it was the last time you saw it. And here it is now. I'm doing this on a 32 count. Um, I want to say it's called Raspberry Chocolate. Bought it a while back from Jen Stitching Niche. Um, it's in the called for colors, which are what drew me to this piece because I really love these are some of my favorite general arts colors. Um, all except for the brown. You see this brown up here. Um, I think it was supposed to be tarnished gold. I used a Victorian motto 
um, color that wasn't too far off. And then I, when I started putting it in the trees, I realized it was um, it was too light of a brown on this fabric. So I've switched to Pecan Pie, which I love. It is a beautiful brown. Um, you can see it's pretty variegated. Um, I just have to finish the satin stitching all along this bottom. I've finished the cross stitches. Um, this was a, oh, I had a little bit of satin stitch up in that right corner that the Q snap was covering. Um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. There's a lot of, I guess, specialty stitches, but really it's just satin stitch um, and kind of different variations. Like this is just a pattern you follow, and then this is like a, a diagonal satin stitch. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of fun on this one. I like how it pops on the fabric, and I'm looking forward to finishing this. So those were um, those are my whips right now, and um, quick comment on plans for next month. I have decided that I'm going to go nuts, um, Stephanie, clutch your pearls, because I'm going to start a whole bunch of things in October. Um, it's dark October stitching. Um, the Stitchers Coven group on Facebook has a horror sal. Um, it doesn't have to be horror. It can be any kind of spooky, cute, spooky, whatever. Um, but I have so many Halloween patterns that um, are just sitting there and wanting to be stitched so badly and... Those are my favorites and I can't wait. So I am making plans now and um, figuring out which ones I'm gonna stitch and figuring out what fabric and threads in my stash I'm gonna use. And then I'm hoping, well, here's my plan, my rough plan, but I'm not gonna stress myself out over cross stitch so I could drop it if I need to. But um, I think I'm gonna start a different pattern every other day in October. Crazy. Um, and I'm hoping I can get myself to vlog it. Who knows? So maybe a little over a month from now, you'll see a dark October stitching vlog from me. Um, next October is actually my three year floss tube anniversary, which is kind of crazy, especially considering that I don't have less than 20 videos. Um, so those are my plans. Um, next, I would like to show you some of the very sweet things I have received from other stitchers since the last time I made a video. Um, I received this very cute postcard out of the blue from Lisa, the silver stitcher. Lisa, thank you so much for thinking of me. It's awesome to get this in the mail. Um, I want you to know that I'm thinking of you. So thank you. Um, Becky, the obsessed stitcher, I, um, I gave her a pattern that I had stitched um, for her to stitch. Um, she gave it back to me, which she didn't need to do. And then she also gave me a thank you gift, which I believe is a chart that she got at um, retreat, but I love, I'm sure you can tell why. It's an awesome Halloween chart um, from Overis. Very cool. Thank you, Becky. Um, this is so sweet. Andrea C from Andrea C. I Heart Cross Stitch on Floss Tube and on Instagram. Um, she said she saw this pattern and thought of me. Um, it's called The Sun Shines with Love on a Happy Home from Homespun Elegance. I love this pattern. She didn't know I had this on my wish list. Um, but she saw it. She didn't own it already. She saw it and then she sent it to me. She bought it for me for 123 Stitch, which is so sweet. Thank you so much, Andrea. This is beautiful and I look forward to stitching this. Um, thank you. I do love it. I love these colors. I love the house, of course. I love the border. So thank you so much. Um, and then Betty Yulon, she was, um, watching Elena's video and I think it was Elena's last video. And part of that video was a haul video <laughs> of haul that she had gotten from, um, Stitcher's Paradise in Vegas, and she had bought me several things, and we did a video about them, and I was talking about you and I and friends, and um, Betty Yulon asked if she could send me some, and she said she had some Halloween patterns, I was like, oh my god, I love Halloween, um, and so she sent me all these patterns, I was not expecting this, Betty, thank you so much, I already thanked you, but thank you so much, this is my favorite right here, it's called uh, Scary Cottage, I think I'm gonna start that next month, so cute. This guy is called Pumpkin Stick. Um, I love that. I love his head. I think I might stitch just the jack-o'-lantern. Um, I love all the specialty stitches in there. That's very cute. This is Scary Hag. I want to stitch this too. Look at how fun that is. Oh my god, it's so cute. This is called Horrible Hag. And guys, it comes with the hair. 
<laughs> That's so funny. The witch in the moon. This is heart so true. It's a very cute pinky. Another one I want to stitch. Hag scissor companion. That's another cute green witch. So Betty, thank you so much for thinking of me. Um, I love them. They're awesome. So thank you for spreading the love. Um, and spreading your stash. <laughs> Um, and then, out of the blue, Ingeborg, look at this beautiful card. Diana, I got a boat too, so I don't know what that means. I don't know if we should be worried, but um, I'm going to take it as a good sign. Look at those beautiful letters. Um, so, for Elaine and I, she sent us, oh my god, you guys, you're going to die. These are kits. Look at them! They're Christmas gnomes. Oh my god, they're full kits. We have to stitch these soon. I love them. They're so cute. Beautiful silks. Look at those colors. Oh my god. These are just these look just like silks that would be used in them. The Anne Ufendel sampler. Beautiful. Beautiful Shakespeare's Peddler. Jane Patterson. So pretty. And Elaine and I love this designer, which Ingeborg knows. This is a Renato Perlin. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Hopefully start that next spring. Thank you so much, Ingeborg. Um, I love you to death anyway, and this is so unnecessary and so unexpected. But thank you so much. What an awesome gift to get in the mail. Um, yeah, so that's it for gifts. That was... Thank you guys so much. You just get me right there. All right, guys. So it's been a while. And even when it hasn't been a while, you don't like the stash. So um, I, uh, I, since I last saw you, I sold a bunch of stuff on Stash and Load. So there's that. But I really just turned around. I mean, there, it's not like I'm going to cash out my PayPal account and put the money in a bank, right? Um, I had to use it before it expired, which, um, it doesn't do that. PayPal doesn't do that. I'm sorry, PayPal. But, um, you know, I didn't want to take the risk really. So, um, no, so I, I got rid of a bunch of stuff I knew I was never going to stitch. Um, and that was good. And then I bought a bunch of stuff that I told myself I am going to stitch. So whatevs. Um, but I used that money to, um, I was able to score some unicorns of mine, um, I bought a few patterns that I knew I had that were out of print that I knew I had access to for retail price, but I put off because they weren't cheap and um, and I wanted to wait for the right time and it was finally the right time. So I'm excited to show you guys all the stuff I got. That's all mixed up with a bunch of stuff I've bought on Stash and Load because I went on the Stash and Load to sell stuff, but then I never really left, right? So problem there. So anyway, there's all of that. No regrets. I love it all. Very excited to share it with you. Farm girl, I'm about to do it, so I don't want to scare you. It's time for haul! Okay. So, this is in no particular order. No order um, from where I bought it, no order when I bought it. I just, I've been putting it in a pile. Um, I've rifled through it several times because it's been so long. Um, but then I think I piled it all up again so I can show you guys. Um, okay, this is Stash and Load, these next two. The first one is a You and I and Friends. It's called Let Virtue Reside. Isn't that cute? It is. The answer is yes, it is. This is the Sunflower Seed Spiders and Bats. Oh my. I actually, uh, I don't think I'll do the border. I, th I just really love that house and the tree. So that that's probably what I'll stitch. But you never. It is very cute though, with the bats and spiders. Um, Leon Conrad is a very talented, well known in the black work community, black work designer. But he kind of, I think, under my understanding, he just kind of disappeared from designing um, years ago. So when I do find his patterns, if it's something I like, I usually snatch them up. I mean, if they're good well priced and this one definitely was this is um 12 different designs a 12 part thing it's called um actually I don't really know what the series is called it just I think they have names for the individual designs um 
there was a series of them. This is just one of them. They're all in here. Um, I got for a very good price. They're all squares like this, like tiles. Um, they're beautiful. They have um, beads and metallics in them. And um, I like to think about how I'll stitch them all, but I don't really know for sure. These other ones. I think they're all around the same size. I think 61 by 61, but I don't know if stitching them all together would be too huge, but I'm not planning on stitching them anytime soon, so I don't need to figure it out. Um, but I was happy to find this, and I got it. I know, that was eBay. Uh, I think these were Stash and Move. This is the Kingsford Sampler by Barrick Samplers. I always had this on my wish list. There's something about this. I think it has to do with the way the trees are. The way you only see the bottom of the trees and the deer. I don't know, but I think that's really cute. It's an older one. Stacy Nash Primitives. This is Prized Pig Sewing Book and Flower Urn Pin Keep. I've always loved this pig. Don't know what it is about that guy. Something so cute. Him next to the flowers? I don't know. This is Pine Tree Farm Pin Keeps. Kind of hard to see because they're so primmed up and dirty. Um... Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with Stacey Nash. I had so much fun stitching that one piece. Um, this is Birds of a Feather Bitter Flower Sampler. You guys know this one, I'm sure. Always had my eye on that. It showed up for cheap and couldn't pass it up. Um, of course, even though I have all these designs, I like every time I get one, I, I want to plan in my head how I'm going to stitch it. This one, I, I think I would take out the words and letters. I, I just love that flower for some reason. Um, there's one lady posted some patterns on Stash and Load. This is out of print Blackbird Design Search for like $4. And I was like, oh, me please. And then something happened where I paid her and like she couldn't, I think she was just very confused and had also posted it somewhere else and then she didn't have it to sell and it was this thing. And um, when it comes to these sash and loading sites, I don't stress it really. Like if, if I think I got a pattern or something that was, you know, a great deal and then it falls through or something like, I don't get angry about it. I'm just it, I figure it was a mistake because it, it can be kind of stressful when you sell on there um, because it is money exchanging hands, right? So um, I was like, don't worry about it. You know, just refund my money and whatever. But then as a kind of consolation prize, she said, how about I sell you this booklet for $5? And I was like, yes, please. This is Mary Ann Blackburn by Blackbird Designs. Isn't that pretty? Um, these I bought from Mary Hickmott, um, I'm trying to remember the, the website name for you guys, but, oh, I think it's stitch, stitchdirect.com. If you go to that site, you can buy hard copy and PDF patterns from Mary Hickmott, um, like the Queen Elizabeth that I showed you, um, in my finishes. Anyway, after finishing Queen Elizabeth, I was like, oh my god, I want more Mary Hick Hickmott black work, and... Um, one of these has been on the list forever, and finally I was like, okay, let me just go spend the $7 or whatever it is and buy it, and I did. Um, it is called Italian Cathedral. There are a lot of people who <laughs> show this pattern too, and they're like, really? Or maybe they don't do that, maybe that's just like the vibe I get, but it seems like that's a lot of work, why do you want to stitch that? I think cathedrals are beautiful, I think black work is beautiful, I think architecture and stitching is beautiful, so this to me is just beautiful. <laughs> I want to stitch this one day. Um, I don't, I wouldn't do it in red probably, but, um, I think this is very pretty. If you've ever read Pillars of the Earth, you probably understand. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I got that and because no chart could go alone, I also picked up Romanesque Blackwork Part 1, another beautiful architectural piece. Um, I would, I don't know, I, there's so many possibilities when you stitch these. I think I would do black on white, but who knows? Um, but this is another beautiful one, I think. And there's a part two also. Might be a part three. I can't remember. But yeah, so I got those. Work basket. Um, if you saw Elena's haul video, I have a thing at the work basket lately. Um, and they are no longer publishing their patterns, but they're out there to buy often cheaper than they originally sold for. This is Flutter Buys. I kind of think Amy needs this pattern too, though. Maybe I should just stitch it now so I can send it off to Amy. Just look at it. It's a toad. Anyway, that's so cute. And it kind of goes with this other one I got from Work Basket called Trellis. Very pretty. 
I like the funky patterns. This is Bright Needle Christmas Window. These are all stash and load sites. Um, this one will probably be my plans next month. There's a lot that I say all oh, I want to say that about. This is Halloween Pinky from Station Nash Primitives. Look at that guy. Both of these guys are so freaking cute. I love the faces. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Enchanted Crow by Thread Threadwork Primitives. I've seen several people stitch this. This is Jack in the Hat by Threadwork Primitives. This one was on my list for so long, and I finally bought it. Fiddlesticks Designs on Etsy. I like their store, and they often have sales, and they had a 15, I think it was like 15% off. And then for Memorial or Labor Day, they had free shipping, and finally I was like, I'm getting this, because I just worry about it going out of, uh, out of print, because it's an older one. But I just always love this one. It's just called Christmas Cottage by Brenda Gervais. This is so cute. I think it's all about that Santa's face. Look, he's just a little surprised. Just a little. The whole house is so cute. And then at the same time, I bought Gardener Good Witch by Brenda Gervais as well. That's so cute. The cat's wearing a hat. This one I've wanted for so long, ever since Michelle from Cozy Egg showed that her friend had stitched it. Um, Rampant Cat Sampler by Barbara Anna Designs. I love that. Gotta stitch that. Maddie. Not you, Maddie. This Maddie. By Kathy Barrick. So cute. Oh my gosh, I found this for like four dollars on eBay. It's just steal spooky Halloween from Bright Needle with the threads. Yeah, that's cute. The threads are kind of pastel, so either I get used to that idea or I switch them out. That's a problem with like anything that's kitted up, you know. It's like, um, this goes with that Santa I showed you. This is Hallow Day Inn, also by Brenda Gervais. It's kind of that cut through house. Super cute. Okay, let's see that one to show you. Here's another work basket. This is Americana. It says, Cloth is my acre on which I sew so beautifully and diligently. This is another one I had my eye on for a long time. It came up super cheap and I just had to have it um, because Natasha from Stitcherella, well, she was stitching this over one and then had a mishap of the fabric. So I think she's restitching it, but Eliza Scattergood. It's just so cute. And that tree. Love it. This is Sampler Hill by Brenda Gervais. Love that one. <laughs> Strawberry Hill Sampler. Another Brenda Gervais. I love these. Um, next spring, I'm thinking. God, I just love that. Look at that. All of these pieces. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, this was a steal. Um, 1612 by the Primitive Needle. Love this. So funky. Gotta figure out. It's a lot of gray fill in. Do I want to fill it in or figure something out with fabric? But it's a cute design. Another work basket. This is called Farm. And this one is called Landscape. This is the um, companion to Americana. This one says, Thy needle is my plow. The needle is my plow with which I sew so beautifully and skillfully. Tooting your own horn will wear. Home is where you hang your needlework. God, this came up for 10 bucks. Couldn't pass it up after seeing more of my girls stitch it, like Trisha and Abby, the Primitive Needle Kindred Spirits. Just love that one. Um, with Kindred Spirits tried and true, my, may Halloween be fine for you. This one welcomes a plenty. Five by Homespun Elegance. I just thought these were really cute. These little welcome signs. Different one for different seasons. This is Prairie Schooler, a Prairie Garden. Always loved this one. This is the, the cardstock. Yay! I got really lucky on some old cardstocks for super cheap. This is Prairie Flowers. I love this one. Kindred Stitcher is stitching this, but she converted the colors and it's amazing. I recently found these three little wooden frames that match at an estate sale 
and um, bought this with this pattern and bought them with this pattern in mind and I didn't even own the pattern yet I just knew one day they'd reprint it and then I picked it up for like four dollars or something but I want to stitch that home for Christmas and Prairie Village one and two super cute jeez guys really I think I was opening a store here. Not Forgotten Farm, Spring Farmhouse. Um, Not Forgotten Farm has a channel on FlossTube now, and I'm in love. Um, I mentioned last video I'm going to the attic in November. I can't wait. Ends up I'm going to April too, by the way, for Arizona Stitch Fest. Woo um, but then my next stitchy bucket list place, I think, might be Not Forgotten Farm. Those ladies are so creative. This was so awesome. I got this on Stash and Load for like $15. Seven historical samplers, the Chester County collection. Teresa was talking about this recently. She did a giveaway. Um, and there's a lot of really cute samplers in here. This another one I had I wanted after seeing Natasha from Citrella Stitch It. It's uh, she's still working on it, I think. Betsy. My sheepish designs. Very cute. Brick House by the Work Basket. Spotless Innocence by Sheepish Designs. I think that's so cute. Look at those trees. Those aren't cross stitch. They're, um, I believe they're stem stitch and lazy daisies. I have no problem with those things though. Before I found cross stitch, I embroidered. So. Oh, I love this. I just love Kathy Merrick. These I bought on 123 Stitch, I believe. This, um, yeah, when I brought Cooper. This is Crow number five. It's awesome. Both of those came out at Nashville, as did this one, which I love. Miss Mary Hadley. Probably saw Teresa Kitten Stitcher stitch the, um, the accompanying pattern to this. Um, I love this one. In my dreams, I have, like, her on a wall, and then around her I have the different birds designed by Kathy Barrick and Carriage House. But Give me a few decades. Um, from the Vermilion Stitchery, the Wisdom Sampler. I was always on the search for this one on eBay, and then one day it popped up, and the designer has passed, but her sister is selling these, reissuing them, um, which is awesome, because then you just pay a regular price, and the designer's family gets the proceeds. Um, it's a beautiful sampler. These I think I bought through the attic from McKenna. Into the Manor Born by Carriage House Sampling. No, Kathy Barrick, sorry. Winter Swan by Kathy Barrick. Give by Plum Street Samplers. And this one I wanted for quite a while. This is Ladies Trim Keep and Companion. I love the companion right there. Save that. Save that. Okay. Um, this is, let's see, a few more from McKenna at the attic. Wait. Attic Needlework Last Chance. That's our Facebook group. All Hollows Eve by Chessie and Me. So cute. Autumn 1831 by Samplers Not Forgotten. Heaven Above by Midsummer Night Designs. I don't know what it is about this one. I just struck my fancy. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'll keep that one or not. And then this is the stitching parlor Birds of Killingworth. Um, and then this was a super lucky find on one of the stash loading sites um, this last week. I have been hunting for this one. I'm not hunting, but like it comes up on eBay and it's always more than I want to pay. And I found it for under 10. Someone posted it for under 10 bucks the other day. This is Bright Needle Needle Workshop. They have some really cute designs like this. Um, if you watch... Heather, the Springfield Stitcher, you've seen them. Um, she's working on the dollhouse right now. I think she's working on a couple of them. They're so cute, but I was, look I was always looking out for the needle workshop, and I'm so excited. I really need to start this soon. 
that's the thing. It's like if you're searching for something for that long and then it finally comes up and you get it, then you really should stitch it, not just stick it in your stash, right? Not just think about it, stitching it. Seems like a waste. Um, that same seller posted this. Um, I had on my wish list for a while, Jenny Bean and Friends. I think that's so cute. Okay, so there is a designer that, they're kind of my unicorn charts, her designs, um, the ones that, not all of them, but um, I love some of them. Um, they, she's no longer, okay, so it's exem Exemplars from the Heart slash Exemplar Dames. She went by both. Um, her name's Vilma C. Becklin, and she's no longer publishing her designs. Um, she had like a, I've hauled a couple in the past, just kind of a funkier aesthetic, but something I just love about her designs. Um, they weren't cheap designs when they were available. Um, and they're not impossible to find. Um, a lot of the ones that I like, they're just, you know, I don't know. I've, I've found them. I've over time, I've found them and I've paid what the normal price was or less, but, um, cause I don't like to buy patterns or, you know, more than that. But um, there were a few that were on my wish list, and um, I just waited till I sold stuff on Stash and Load, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna take that money, invest them in these designs that I really, really want, and I want to stitch, and that are pricier. Anyway, gosh, none of that probably made sense. Two of these um, I tracked down at the attic, and they had. Um, first one is Behold My Work. I just think it's beautiful. It says, in the glad morn of blooming youth, these various threads I drew, and now behold this finished piece let's, lies glorious to thy view. So when bright youth shall, shall charm no more, and age shall chill my blood, may I review my life and say, behold, my works were good. Don't know if I like that font and the way it breaks off, but I do love these bands and the colors. Um, when I was looking for it for quite a while, called Black Dahlia and it was sitting at the attic the whole time. This is Black Dahlia. This one says, with needle thread and a piece of linen in hand I stitched this exemplar in the year of our Lord 2007. I don't know if I'll include the text but I love the bands and the Black Dahlia in the middle. Um, this is another one that was on my list and um, managed to find it on Stash Unload. And um, Maddie loves this one too, so maybe she'll stitch it before me, but it's called When the Calling Birds Sing. And it's a little hard because of the colors and the, the printing of the photograph to fully make it out, but there's a bunch of stuff going on in here. Um, and then top of my um, exemplars from the heart uh, wish list were two patterns, um, but number one is a piece called True Wisdom, and I finally landed it. I'm so excited, but I just remembered that I have it in my kitted projects because I've got the, bought the fabric and the starting floss for it. Hold on. Okay, so <laughs> I had had this on my radar for years. There, there's something about this design that I just love, and um, I'll show it to you. To get the plastic. And um, there is a LNS that has a website, and this has been on their website for a long time. And I've, every like you know month or two, I go on there and just make sure it was still there, but it wasn't cheap, and um, so I didn't let myself just buy it. Um, and then when I finally sold the stuff on Stash and Load, I went to buy it and put in my order, and it didn't show up. It was actually this one and two other by the same designer, including that when the calling birds sing. Um, I didn't hear from them, and I, I checked in on their, their website, and I didn't hear from them. Finally, I called them a month after I'd paid for it, and um, and they're like, we're so sorry. We put in the order with the designer, and she never, she hasn't responded. I was under the impression they had it in stock, and that's why it was listed on their website. So this whole time that I've been stocking that one pattern, making sure it was still there, and it had never been there. But I'm not going to give the name of the store, because I don't, I very much got the impression that that's not how it usually goes with them, that they're very attentive to their customers. And on top of it, I think it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, I understood. They refunded me. No big deal. I have plenty of patterns, um, and I figured in time it would show up, and eventually it did show up on Stash and Load, and I got it. Um, so this is called True Wisdom. 
Uh, just every time I look at it, I love it. Um, I don't know. I couldn't point out to you exactly what that is. I think it's the colors and the different motifs in here. Um, I'll read you what it says. It says, because it's, I had, it took some research online to figure out what it said because it's so small in the pictures. Um, keep me my little inch of time from idle dreams secure and fill my soul from wisdom's source with joys select and pure. Then, then, oh, then over the rough and briery way, my steps shall lightly tend. Wisdom, my counselor and guide, and God, my promised end. Um, I don't know. I quote, I think if you put a, a quote or a verse in a piece, it should have some special meaning to you. So that might be replaced with something. That's probably the last thing I'll work on. You know, there's, this will take me plenty of time. Um, I bought a piece of linen for it before it even arrived in the mail. And when I got it, the pattern, I realized I'm only going to have a one inch at the top and bottom of the fabric. I'm considering, I've been thinking I'm just going to go for it anyway. So some fabric to both ends. It makes me nervous because it's such a large piece. At the same time, um, this is a fat quarter of linen. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm still on the fence. Um, but this is 40 count um, Lakeside Linen Vintage Homespun. Just a very light yellow. I told Becky it was pea dyed by the maturity of a six year old boy. But um, yes, very nice linen. And um, let me see, the called for threads are all HDF, which are no longer available. They have a DMC conversion on here. But what my plan is um, every, every few months I go to my LNS um, needle in the haystack. And when I'm there, I buy myself a couple Gloriana threads because they're beautiful, but expensive. And I've been saving them up and I am hoping to stitch this in various Glorianas and other silks that I have in my stash. And I'll probably do, I, I think I want it close to these colors. It just won't be the exact threads that they use. Um, I will decide as I go along, but I plan on starting in the middle with this motif and I'll start with Wooly Bear by Gloriana which you can't see here but it's a very pretty dark variegated brown um, and I can't wait to start that that was going to be my next start but like I said I'm planning on starting a million Halloween projects so we're gonna wait but that's okay I can wait I've waited a while a long time to acquire this pattern I can wait a little longer to start stitching it um, Oh my god, you guys, it's 246 by 498. Oh, I gotta enjoy the process, right? That's what I've been learning lately. It's like, I always thought I was all about the project and finishing it, but then I realized I have a lot of stuff hanging in my closet that I finished, things that I need to frame, and I will frame. I don't shame, I don't feel ashamed for not having things framed because I like to wait until I find the exact frame or I'm in the mood to handle framing or whatever. But Obviously, it's not a like super rush to me, and um, there's no one waiting on me to finish things. So, um, so I'm just gonna enjoy stitching that after admiring it for so long. So, those are all the patterns I bought. It's crazy. I got one more thing I want to show you that I bought on Stash and Load. It was just a gift of timing. Hope this doesn't upset anyone, but all is fair in love, war, and cross stitch buying. Yeah, it's the Long Dog book that's out of print. Um, someone posted this. It was 50 euros if you wanted the price. Um, and I snatched it up. And it's beautiful and amazing. And the charts in here are incredible. And um, yes, I'm very lucky, I know. And I hope all of those, those of you who are searching for this desperately find it as well one day. Um, I really think whenever there's a chart that I really, really want, um, but it's out of print and not available anymore, I just kind of tell myself it'll show up one day, and I believe that. So anyway, I was very lucky to find that. Um, so that is my haul. Wowza. Okay, so books. Um, I wanted to do a segment about books. I've been reading a lot. And, um, well, I read a lot. I, I read every day. It's the last thing I do before I go to sleep. Uh, cut off from the 
digital world and do like half an hour to 45 minutes of reading. And then I also listen to audiobooks um, on my way home from work. Excuse my dog barking in the background, if you can hear that. Anyway, it's been a while, um, since, not just since I made a video, but since I talked about books. I didn't talk about books in the last few videos. Um, so I'm not going to go into all the books I read, but... Um, oh, excuse me, the dog's barking. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> dog's giving me a mopey face. I made him come aside. Um, so, um, it's been a while since I talked about books. I, th I've not going to go through all of them, but, um, I just thought I'd bring up a few that stuck with me. Um, so, um, usually I give away, I try to make a point that once I read a book, I get rid of it. Um, I'm trying not to hang on to books anymore, but if I love the book, I'll hang on to it or, um, usually classics I'll hang on to. Um, so that being said, okay, so here's one. Um, this is called Dr. Muther's Marvels by Kristen O'Keefe Aptowicz. Uh, I believe this is a famous museum in Philadelphia. I know Ginger Gerald has been there. Julia, I'm going to assume you've been here, considering what you study and that it's in your area. I would love to go to it one day, but this is not really about the museum. It's about the man. Um, he was a surgeon in the 1800s, and it talks about him. Um, he's a very interesting guy. Um, it talks about what he did. He kind of revolutionized surgery, surgery for people with disfigurements, um, burn victims, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to go into any of this stuff, just in case any of you um, are grossed out by that kind of stuff. But it was very interesting. It was not gross, in my opinion. Um, super interesting guy. Uh, this is just a time in history that I love to um, learn about, and I love stories set in the 1800s and reality set in the 1800s. Um, it's like a weird thing. I love... Um, Things London and New York in the uh, 19th century. This one's in Philadelphia, but same kind of deal. Um, anyway, I recommend this book. It's nonfiction. Um, I don't read a ton of nonfiction. I read some nonfiction. This is kind of, in my opinion, nonfiction for people who don't read a ton of nonfiction, like me. Like I, I like a, like it keeps moving, good pace. Um, so that was a good book. Um, a book I listened to on audio um, called Song of Achilles. I will have to. Put, I, I'm forgetting the author now, but I'll I'll put the uh, picture of it of the book cover here. This was this author just came out with a second book called Circe, and I had listened to that on audiobook and I really liked it. And then I listened to Song of Achilles, and um, basically what the author does is take characters from Greek mythology, um, from famous stories like the Odyssey and the Iliad and takes one of the minor characters and then writes a story from their, writes their story from their perspective. Um, a Song of Achilles is written from, um, it's been a while now, Petrocle Petrocles, Petrocles, um, his perspective. He was um, Achilles in the, the Iliad. He was Achilles um, companion, best friend. Um, spoiler alert, if you have the Iliad, he gets killed. Um, and um, Achilles then kills the guy who killed him, and then his, his brother killed him. And it just it, it. Anyway, you, you go into Song of Achilles knowing how it's going to end. Um, but Song of Achilles takes the idea of Petroclus, Petroclus, I can't say his name, and Achilles. And instead of making them best friends, they are lovers. And they kind of grew up together, came of age together, and they are lovers. And it's... I'm just bringing this story up because this was amazing. Um, it was one of the most powerful love stories I've ever read. It was one of those books that I was thinking about when I wasn't listening to the audiobook. Um, I highly recommend it. It was so well done. It was so powerful. And it's just one of those things where since you know how the story is going to end um, and that it's not going to be a happy ending, you kind of like, and the whole time, you're just kind of hoping it'll change, you know. Um, but that was that was an amazing book. And that's it. And so... There was that one. That was the best audiobook I've listened to since I last saw you. Um, and then this was a popular book last year, and it came out in paperback, and I picked it up. This is called The Essex Serpent by uh, Sarah Perry. Isn't that an awesome book cover? There's a black version, too. It's really pretty. But anyway, um, this is literary fiction. Now, I loved this book for the way it was written. Um, it 
again takes place in um, this takes place in London in the late 1800s um, and a woman who is um, becomes a, a widow um, but her husband was abusive so it's not like a sad widowhood um, that's kind of at the beginning she goes out to Essex um, she is interested in science like natural science um, there's kind of a supernatural element to it but you're not sure like I don't want to give away too much um, I loved the way it was written and I very much enjoyed this book if you're into literary fiction and that time period um, I think you might like this and then I just finished this today this is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I read this despite it being pink. I have no problem with it being fat. I like that about a book, especially a classic, because then if you like the book, you know it's going to last for a while. Um, yeah, it's very pink. Not my favorite color. No offense to those love pink. But despite that, beautiful book. Um, oh my god, I enjoyed this so much. It. I Last time I talked about books, I talked about North and South um, by Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, and so this was, if you like these books, like, um, kind of like Jane Austen, but it's like the, the slow ride of like, like you kind of know what's going to happen and you've got the super good characters and then you've got like the bad influences and all that, except there's characters in here that, that have more dimension than that. Um, and I enjoyed that. Um, something I knew going into this book and forgot until I got to the end is that Elizabeth Gaskell never got a chance to finish it. She passed away before the end, but it was very, very close to finished. And, um, after I'd say it probably cut, only cut off like one or two chapters. Um, you know, by the end, how it's going to end. Um, you still just don't get that follow through, which I wish I had, but, um, there's an article in here after that. It talks about, mentions a few of the things Elizabeth Gaskell said about the story that give you an idea of how it would have ended, um, the kind of details to the ending, but still you don't get it in her writing style, but still worth reading. Good book. Um, so that is my summary of books. I love when you guys talk about books, if you're into books. Um, so keep that up. Stephanie, I love that you're reading War and Peace. I have a beautiful copy of that, that Elena's boyfriend Serge gifted me for my birthday once. And I really want to read that every year in the winter. I read a Charles Dickens novel. He's my favorite. Um, I would, I could gladly just read all of his books all the way through, but I try to make them last since there's no new ones coming, right? Um, so I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to read this winter, but that will happen. And maybe somewhere in there I can fit or a piece, except I don't know. I need to be ready, I guess, for the long haul. Um, I, in like the October kind of year, I do like to read things that are a little spookier or... You know, it's fun to seasonally read sometimes. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you made it this far, even if you didn't and you can't hear this ending, um, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you um, just for coming back. I just appreciate it. I, um, I appreciate all of those of you who take time to make videos, all of you that take time to watch videos. Um, I love seeing all your beautiful pictures on Instagram. Um, I'm just so thankful to all of you just for being part of this community um, because it's the best part of my day is uh, watching Floss TV in the evening, looking at pictures and all of that good stuff. Anyway, insert some magically helpful tagline of life instruction here. I don't have one. Um, just want to say thanks and have a great day and hopefully I will have some kind of vlog for Dark October Stitching. Who knows? Um, bye guys!